What is up everyone? Mark here and welcome to Prepared Pantry Presents. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different with the video and take you through uh, some of the kitchen gadgets and tools that I consider to be a little bit more indispensable than others. Um, I think you will too. Uh, if you're interested in buying any of these, I do have links, uh, Amazon, down in the description, uh, as well as time codes in case you want to click around and see what I'm talking about, uh, any specific thing on the list. Um, but first, I want to thank you all again for continuing to support the channel, continuing to support what I'm doing here, uh, continuing to uh, give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. If you haven't already, please do click the red button down below. Make sure you click the uh, bell icon also so you get a notification anytime I have a new video out. Um, all right, let's get right into it. The first thing that I want to talk about is an 8-inch chef's knife. Now, if you are not going to buy any other knives for your kitchen, one knife to own is an 8-inch chef's knife. Um, all different manufacturers. Um, I like uh, this mine, which is a Schmidt. Um, I keep it sharp. You want to make sure your blade is always sharp. If it's dull, uh, you'll know it's dull if when you try to cut through a tomato, it slips off the skin. Uh, you're actually more likely to hurt yourself with a dull knife than you are with a sharp knife because it'll slip and slide all over the place. Uh, and one other note is uh, how to properly hold a knife. You want to hold the handle firmly and you can even choke up with your fingers on the blade if you like but do not put your finger out on the top of the blade like this. It just does not work. Uh, it's not stable, and you'll notice that your hand and your wrist and the, the tendons get tired um, just from, from having that finger stretched out. Not good, don't do it. Next item I wanna talk about is a set of glass measuring cups, uh, Pyrex measuring cups. I've got a one cup, a two cup, and a four cup or quart size measure. Um, guys, I use these for everything. Uh, not just for measurement. Um, I'll microwave a little bit of sauce or a little bit of water in them. Uh, they're great for mixing up a small amount of something that you're going to have to pour into another container. Uh, for instance, the quart size I use all the time to make uh, instant pudding, uh, right? Easy to pour into the serving containers and you're not messing up a bunch of bowls and a, a bunch of dishes uh, just for a simple recipe. Uh, indispensable to have around, highly recommended. Now, in addition to glass measuring cups, it's also important to have a uh, dry measuring cups. So those glass measuring cups are liquid measuring cups. They're made for pourable liquids. Dry ingredients like flour and sugar, uh, you wanna use dry uh, measuring cups like this. Um, one cup, uh, half a cup, a third a cup, and a quarter cup size are pretty much what you'll get in most sets. Um, this plastic set that I have here is no longer manufactured, but the, the manufacturer makes another one out of stainless steel that's just as good. Uh, that's what I've got the link to down in the description. Now, the reason you want these is because it's, it's hard to pour and measure out um, dry ingredients in a cup like this. You've got to pour it in there and make sure that it's not mounted over. You've got to get it level and try to get it to the line. Not easy to do. But with these, you just scoop in your ingredients and you can use a knife to scrape right along the top and you know that you've got the exact amount that you need. Now, one thing to look for if you're just uh, looking at these yourself out there is you want a cup that is flat along the top here. You don't want anything that's gonna hang up your knife when you go to scrape it off. And the last measuring cup that I wanna talk about is this thing right here, and you've probably seen this in some of my videos already. So this is a dry and liquid adjustable measuring cup. This is perfect for uh, sticky, oily things that are kind of hard to measure and hard to get out of the measuring cup once you've measured them. Uh, you can set it uh, to whatever size that you need it to be. There's separate uh, markings and lines for imperial measurements and metric measurements, as well as liquid versus dry. Uh, for liquid, there's a fill line so you don't come right up to the top. And for dry, um, just like with the dry measuring cups, you can scrape along the top. So this will hold liquid. Uh, one of the most uh, impressive features of it, one of the things that I like it for the most, is for sticky ingredients and oily ingredients, like I said, plunge it right into your uh, work bowl and you can scrape off any extra and all of what you've measured goes into your recipe and doesn't get stuck in the measuring cup. Uh, next item I want to talk about is a bench scraper. Uh, another indispensable thing to have around. It's great for uh, getting under items uh, like uh, you know rolled out dough. Great for scraping down the surface um, once you've got a you know dough stuck to your uh, to your breadboard. Um, lots of uses: chopping, scraping. Uh, you'll use it all the time. All right, the garlic press. So this is a unitasker, right? It's one device that does nothing but uh, press garlic. Um, 
I love this thing and I use it all the time. As much as I don't like to have unitaskers around my kitchen because they take up space and they only do that one thing, uh, this does its one thing and it does it really well. Um, depending on how much garlic you use in your recipes, you may want one of these too. It's just so much simpler to put the garlic in here, crush it through, and you're done. Uh, you don't even have to peel the garlic. You can put it in here with the, with the, with the paper on it and uh, squeeze it through and it's, it's effortless. Highly recommend uh, garlic press. Next up is a kitchen scale, a digital kitchen scale. A lot of times you'll find that um, recipes will have the ingredients measured out by weight. Or as you've seen me do before, I want to portion things out for multiple layers of a, of a particular thing. Um, or, you know, I'm making multiple small loaves and I want them to all be the same size. Multiple burgers, you want them to all be the same size and weight. Uh, perfect for that. Just make sure you have one that has a tear function. Um, just meaning that when you put a bowl on it that weighs something, uh, you can press a button to zero out the scale so that when you put your ingredients in, now you're just weighing the ingredients and you're not having to deal with the, um, the weight of the, of the bowl or the vessel as well. Um, also handy if it can do multiple measurements. Um, I like a scale that can measure in ounces as well as grams. Um, just a very versatile tool to have around. Absolutely get yourself a kitchen scale. Next up is set of rubber spatulas. So these, I have a couple of different sets, right? I've got a standard uh, commercial Rubbermaid kitchen spatula. Uh, perfect for most uses, general purpose. But then I've also got this set here um, of three different sizes. We've got kind of a large uh, spoon sort of form factor. We've got one large and one small. Um, nice that they have kind of the rounded edges as well as the straight side there so that you can get into different size containers and curves and corners of jars. Um, nice to have a small one and a large one. The thing I like about these in particular is that there's no uh, bump where the stick or where the handle meets the top all perfectly smooth so it's very easy to scrape off on the edge of your bowl and you're not going to get stuff all stuck in there um, also nicely flexible but also firm um, you know just it's one of those things you know a rubber spatula needs to be firm enough but if it's not flexible enough then it's really useless as a rubber spatula so get yourself a nice set of rubber spatulas and you will thank yourself all right the next item I want to talk about is a probe thermometer an instant read thermometer specifically uh, this one turns on automatically when we fold it open, and uh, it gives me a temperature reading accurately within a second or so when I poke it into something. Uh, great for checking doneness of burgers and steaks on the grill, uh, meatloaf in the oven, uh, chicken, turkey, you know, you name it. Uh, it's very important that you always cook to a safe uh, consumption temperature um, so that your food is safe to eat and you're not risking uh, foodborne illness from salmonella and things like that. So um, definitely get yourself an instant read probe thermometer. Now, in the same vein as that, I've also got a dual probe oven thermometer. Now, this is uh, oven safe and it is grill safe. So the probes are actually covered with a, a braided wire uh, to make them a little bit more rugged and help them stand up to something like a grill or a, a very hot oven. Um, I like to use uh, both of them sometimes because I've, I've got, you know, two... Uh, servings or something or two portions of something in the oven and I want to make sure that both of them are at the right temperature then um, you know it, just because one is doesn't mean that the other one is you know when you're doing two baked uh, chicken breasts for example one is always going to be a little bit thicker and it's going to take a little bit longer to cook so it's just good to know uh, where you're at there this particular model uh, has the base unit which the probes plug into and this can kind of hang on the uh, edge of the counter on a drawer pole on the edge of the stove um, and that stays there, but then I can take this one with me into the other room and it's wireless. So it will always show me, I can set alarms, um, you know, different features allow me to set the type of meat, or I can just manually put in a, a, a temperature that I want uh, to be my set point. Um, again, super important to make sure that your food is cooked all the way through and is at a safe temperature to eat. So uh, just as with the instant read probe thermometer, um, this is indispensable in your kitchen. Now, I think you've heard me say this before, but your oven internal built-in uh, thermometer lies. Uh, it lies all the time. And it means well, it's trying hard, but the temperature can vary in the different corners of the oven, uh, front to back, side to side, top to bottom. Um, this uh, comes as a two pack, super cheap, um, just inexpensive dial thermometers. The thing that I like about these in particular is that with these hooks on the top, you can hang it on the, uh, the wires running this way, or you can hang it on the wires running this way, 
and same thing. And it's got a nice flat base, so you can even put it right down on a rack or on a, on a sheet pan if you want. Um, and like I said, these come in a two pack and it was relatively inexpensive. So I keep these both on either side of the oven. It helps me judge when the oven comes up to temperature accurately. Uh, oftentimes, even when the thing beeps and tells me that I'm preheated to 350, I look at one side and I got like 340. I look at the other side and I got like 330. And, and that difference is significant, right? Um, you want to always make sure that you're cooking at the right temperature, that you're baking at the right temperature. Um, recipes are designed to work at the temperatures that they tell you to cook at. And if your oven is not at the right temperature, you're not doing yourself any favors. So definitely pick yourself up a couple of cheap oven thermometers. Uh, now this one is a little bit more of a nice to have than a need to have. Um, its application is a little bit more limited, uh, but this is an infrared uh, laser uh, thermometer. So when I point this down, you know, I don't know if you can see it here, there's a little little dot. Um, that is the area that the thermometer is looking at, and it's, it's taking a temperature uh, infrared. So it'll tell me what the temperature is on the readout here. Uh, it's great for knowing that your griddle or your frying pan or your grill is hot enough. Lots of different uses, but a little, like I said, a little bit more limited than the others. It's kind of a nice to have, but it's not a need to have. All right, now the next item I wanna talk about, paper food trays. Uh, these are three pound paper food trays. Uh, they're called three pound trays because they are uh, designed to be able to hold three pounds of food successfully without falling apart. Um, I love to use these uh, for all sorts of things. They're handy for, uh, for crafts. They're handy for uh, getting ingredients ready. They're handy uh, just for snacks uh, in place of a paper plate or a paper bowl. Uh, it's so versatile. I use these all the time. Um, definitely want to get yourself some of these for your kitchen. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is vacuum storage. So, um, you know, I have a vacuum sealer. You've probably seen where I've used that for, you know, some of the pasta and things that I freeze. Um, and for sure, uh, all of those vacuum sealers uh, make canisters that you can hook up with a tube uh, so that you can vacuum seal a canister too. The thing I like about these in particular is that they are fully self-contained. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, I don't know if you can see here, but this is vacuum sealed right now. There's a little bit of a green ring that's visible down this little hole. Uh, if I press this button, it pops back up, the seal's broken, and I can take this top off. And when I want to seal it again, I just turn the lid back and forth. And as it does this, it's drawing out the air. And when that little button drops down and reveals the green ring again, I know that I'm vacuum sealed. Um, again, I love these, uh, not only because they're clear, I can see what's going on inside them, uh, but they are entirely hand operated. There's no batteries. There's nothing, you know, nothing to, to break really. There's no separate unit needed to do the vacuum sealing. Perfect for dry goods like coffee. Um, definitely worthwhile. You want to get yourself a set. Next is plastic wrap. Uh, plastic wrap, uh, not all plastic wrap is created equal. Uh, this is freeze tight and it has a built in cutter on the edge here. Uh, this stuff is great. It's the right thickness. It, uh, it sticks correctly to itself and to bowls and containers. Um, it's a little bit more expensive for sure than a lot of standard plastic wrap. Uh, you can absolutely get cheaper plastic wrap and uh, you've probably got cheap plastic wrap uh, in your house right now. Uh, I used to get the cheap stuff too, believe me. And I thought the price for this was outrageous when I first saw it. But I'll tell you, since I got this, I would not go back. Um, it's 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 such a time saver. I actually wasted so much plastic wrap before by tearing off a sheet, having it come off uneven, having it all stick to itself to where I couldn't get it apart again. Um, save yourself some time in aggravation and get yourself the good plastic wrap. Next up is pizza stone. Now, I use this pizza stone all the time, not just for pizza, but I keep it actually on the bottom rack of my oven. And that way when I'm preheating, the stone is getting nice and hot too. And it helps to radiate and regulate that temperature in the oven. So the elements in the oven are coming on and off all the time. Uh, it's trying to maintain a temperature based on what you've set the set point at. This has some thermal mass to it. So it will absorb a lot of heat and it will continue to radiate that heat. Again, that's why these are great for pizza. And don't get me wrong, you definitely wanna use this for pizza. But you don't even have to worry about where you store it because you just keep it in the oven all the time. Um, it really doesn't hurt anything. And like I said, I think it actually helps uh, to stabilize the temperature in the oven. The last item I wanna talk about is parchment paper. You've seen me use this a ton as well. Um, I'm constantly using it uh, to line pans, greased or otherwise. Uh, I use it all the time. Uh, I almost never use a plain uh, baking sheet or uh, a plain sheet pan. 
um, almost always line it with parchment paper. Now, yes, you can buy parchment paper by the roll. Uh, perfectly good, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem with it for me is that the stuff on a roll tends to curl up and no matter what you do, it's hard to get it to sit flat on the pan. These sheets are just individually uh, pre-cut sheets. They are the perfect right size for a half sheet pan uh, or a cookie sheet. You can fold it, you can cut it to whatever size you need. Um, these are far superior in my mind uh, to the rolled parchment paper and it is definitely much cheaper. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll consider getting some of these tools for yourself. It'll absolutely make your job in the kitchen that much easier. Um, again, thank you for watching today's video and for watching all the way through. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook right now, I encourage you to go over to youtube.com slash markberm and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, when you do that, you're gonna wanna click the bell icon to make sure you get a notification every time I have a new video come out. While you're at it, don't forget to follow me on social media. You can find me at markberm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And um, that's really it for today. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.